welcome to Conversations with Tona Brown. I have to say I've been looking forward to this interview simply because a little backstory for everyone on my show. We met at the Greensboro Bound Book Festival or Literary Festival. Mm -hmm. That's the title. And I was so mesmerized with the story from your book which is entitled The Violent Conspiracy here. And you guys, I got my own copy. I'm going to get my signed copy. So I definitely suggest everyone to get their copy of this book. It's phenomenal. Tell us a little bit about the book. We're going to go straight into it because then we want to know the man behind the, um, the book. So tell us a little bit about the storyline in this book and what inspired you to write it. First, thank you so much for having me here. It is an absolute pleasure. I'm honored to be here today. And congratulations for all of your success. Thank like, you. Uh, we, thank we, you. we met in Greensboro, and that was awesome. We had a wonderful time in that conversation. That was a great time. Um, Violent Conspiracy is the story of Ray, who discovers that his old family fiddle is actually a priceless Stradivarius violin. And that discovery catapults him into superstardom in the world of classical music. Wow. And right before the Tchaikovsky competition, which is the Olympics of classical music, mm -hmm. the violin is stolen. Was it his family who thinks that he should sell the instrument and split the $10 million? Was it the Marx family who were descendants of the slave owners of Ray's great-great-grandfather say that he stole the instrument from them? Was it Mike the doorman? Who knows? Mm, now, see, that is intriguing as I don't know what. And I think everyone needs to go and get this book because I remember us talking about it. And of course, we don't want to share too much so that you guys don't have something to look forward to. But there are also scenes in this book that um, there are also parts of this book that um, directly correlate with your life. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that as a black man who plays the violin, who is a professional musician, chamber musicians, played with orchestras, all of those things. Tell us a little bit about those experiences and why did you feel that it was Im impactful or important to actually include in your book? Uh, to, to be perfectly honest, when I, when I wrote this in the summer of 2020, um, I needed something to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Summer 2020 was just messed up. Of course, with the pandemic yeah. and everything, just, everyone you know, at home. If, if you're a working musician, you know, working musician, everything got canceled. Just, you know, no rehearsals for uh, recitals or concerts or weddings, everything just canceled. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sitting on the couch, getting fatter and fatter, <laughs> eating every day. And I decided, you know what, I got I, I should do something else. And I had written a manuscript like 20 years ago, mm -hmm. which was terrible. I hope nobody ever sees it. Ever. <laughs> so I'm not even gonna say what the name of it is. But um I saw an advertisement for selling books in the age of COVID. And I'm like, all right, I'll submit. I submitted, agent came back and was like, This is terrible, but you got a good voice, so you should write what you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know music. So I wrote a little bit of the violent conspiracy. I'm like, this is fantastic. I love it. Um Summer of 2020, again, you know, George Floyd happened. Yeah, and absolutely. a lot of people for the first time became aware that situations that we've been experiencing for decades has actually, you know, th that things like this really do happen. Absolutely. And we're seeing it with our own eyes. So it's not so far-fetched for people to read things uh, that happened in the violent conspiracy and say, oh my gosh, that's, that's a real thing. That mm -hmm. really does happen to people. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that you poignantly... Um, made those points in the book. And I think even still with everything that's been seen on television, all the police cameras and everything, there will still be people who are shocked to know <laughs> that as a person of color that you're go that anyone could go through these sort of things. Is there one part of the book that you would like to share that um, really hit home for you that you felt that even with these fictional characters that you just had to put in the book? Give us just a little snippet. <laughs> there is a chapter where the protagonist Ray is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I this happened actually happened to me in 2000. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing a road trip with one of my friends. You know, road trip. We're going down to New Orleans, stopped in Baton Rouge for the night. Um, this is pre-GPS. Mm, so oh goodness, that's when I was getting lost all the, <laughs> all, time. all the time. I'm glad I got some map reading skills. But um, we're going, and it's a Sunday afternoon, uh, Sunday evening, actually. And, um, you know, I don't know where I am, the hotel. Oh, it's that way, but I'm in the far right lane. Put on my signal. Nobody else on the road, Sunday evening. 
put on my left turn signal, turn from the right lane. Woo! -hoo, lights and sirens. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And my friend, who happened to be white in the car, he's like, "What? Like, this is going to be bad." Like, what are you talking about? You just you didn't do anything. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. I had to get out of the car. Mm -hmm. Hands and knees. Gun pointed at me. Mm -hmm. Cop on the bullhorn. Get out of the car. Put your head. I mean, it was. I thought I was done. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to get killed. Absolutely. And uh, people did not believe it. They were like why would a cop do that you know that doesn't make any sense it doesn't things like that don't happen things like that don't happen to you that's right but they that's right. definitely do happen so I really wanted to put that uh, experience in the book and the only difference between Ray and me is Ray went to jail I didn't go to jail mm. yeah. it's, it's nice. and what a blessing that is yeah, you know um, and it's just terrible that you have to go through these situations speaking of that how has it been for you as a black male in classical music um in the industry you know in front of the camera behind the camera what have been some of your exp experiences both positive and negative um the positive things i'll start with something positive um uh, as a teacher i have had the pleasure of just mentoring people who look just like me mm -hmm. um my young latino males and middle eastern males and black males i mean everybody white males to everybody um, you don't often have like a, uh, I hate to boost myself like this, but like a, a role model, mm -hmm. you know, like me. And it's just like, who is this guy? So he's just some normal dude, but he plays violin. And he's got tattoos and earrings and, and a little bit of muscle. He kind of plays a violin. Yes, wow. Right. He, he makes it cool. So, okay, I can do this too. So that, that's that been really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to give people something to aspire to, I like to say, but I know that's blowing my head up, but I need to do that. <laughs> um, but, no, that's the reality, and it's yeah. true. Um, and I will say my first teacher that really made me feel that I could do this as a career was Mr. Daryl Husky. Mm -hmm. And he was a man of color, one of the few men of color in Norfolk, Virginia, in the public school system. Mm -hmm. So at, in middle school, in the seventh grade, um, he was my mentor and became almost like a father figure to mm -hmm. me. And I've studied with him from seventh grade all the way through to college. So it representation does matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and and we don't often get that. Right. Um, but negatively, you know, I've gone into places where I've been invited to conduct or invited to play. And people will look at me when I walk in. Mm -hmm okay, the garbage can is over there if you want to empty it. And uh, yeah, can you just move this over here to think of one of the custodians? Mm. And it's just, I mean, what do, you, what do you do? You smile and you say, okay, well, yeah, if you hand me your violin, I'll show you that. I'm not here to move stuff. And, you know, then they get it. But mm -hmm. the the original perception that they get is you're just you, the you, help, the hired help, help. The hired help. Yeah. yeah, and how does that make you feel when you when you go through that? And it hasn't just been one time; it's been multiple it's times. Been multiple times. Um, it it's not, but it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm the type of person I have to believe that people do things just out of ignorance, not out of malice. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to think that these people are just being rude and crude and just downright mean mm -hmm. intentionally. Right. Like, well, they just don't know. Absolutely. Now you know, and the next time you see someone who looks like me, you won't automatically jump to the conclusion that's that right. they're just hired help. Yeah. So, and I think that's why we can't give up on our dreams and aspirations to be in this business, um, whether it's entertainment or um, and or classical music, mm -hmm. simply because representation representation does matter, and we do change the lives of people when they see that we're capable, yep. you know, um, of doing these sort of careers. So, what would you? Um, how would you advise a young? Let's keep it to men. Mm -hmm. Um, how would you advise a young man of color who wants to be a concert violinist or in a symphony or something like that? First thing I would say is read this book. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> um, never. Some of the best advice that I have been given and that I've tried to live by is just do what you love. Wonderful. Regardless, there will always be people. We're going to, and, and you know, there's always going to be people who are going to tell you, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do something that you can be good at? Why don't right. you do something that you're going to be successful with? Right. 
you know, do it. Be, you, you you chose it. You gravitated towards it for a reason mm -hmm. because you love it. You when you heard that song for the first time, oh man, I, you you'll never forget that feeling. That's right. And that's why you should do things. Don't let anyone ever tell you you can't do something for any reason. Mm -hmm. And and that's the best advice that I've been given. And you know, I I try to live by that example. I try mm -hmm. to set that example for all of my students. I know you do too. Mm -hmm. This is what we do as yeah. teachers. This is what we do. And, and you, you you want everyone to have a little bit more than you had. Absolutely. You know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. You said that so <laughs> perfectly. I, and I, I, I think my students are going to really resonate with what you said. I want them to have more opportunities than I did. Yeah. I want them to, I want to give them the tools that they need so that they can succeed and right. be successful in this business if they choose to go into it. Right. And the other thing too is that um, most of us, especially coming from the African-American community, are so multifaceted, mm -hmm. not only just with music, because we do so many different genres, but just inside and outside of that career. There's mm -hmm. other interests. Do you have any other interests um, outside of music that you like to do? I am, I'm kind of a dork this way, but I'm, a, I'm okay with it. I okay. totally accepted it. I'm a comic book guy. Oh my goodness. I used to love comic <laughs> books as a kid. Oh, we were just talking I'm about that. still all about comic books. Nice. I, I have like 10,000 comic books and action figures and I'm all into that. It's just fun. I like it. It makes me smile. So I'm like, hey, I'll do it. Um, I, I'm into exercise. Although you probably can't tell right now, but I like, you know, um, and, and writing, of course. Yeah. I, I'm really, you know, this this whole writing thing has really taken off and I, I, I love it. And I you're doing phenomenally it. with it. And that's why I wanted to have you on the show so more people um, could really get to know you as a writer. And then, you know, the other thing about our career in branding is that people only see us as one way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think what's great is to showcase someone like yourself who, yes, you're a phenomenal musician, but guess what? That's not my only expertise. I'm also a phenomenal writer. And for those who get a chance to read The Violin Conspiracy, you're going to see that, you know, it is just so wonderful. Today, I'm going to get my signed copy, you all. So he's about to sign this for me, you know, and I just want to thank you so much for coming on Conversations with Tona Brown and just sharing a little bit of your experiences with us in such an honest um, way, you know, that, that, that actually takes skill. It really mm -hmm. does. I, I don't think people realize that because we live in a society where people tend to put up the front oh, yeah. and, you know, and it, or and or uh, personalities where people just drudge through anything, right, right, you right, know, right. and they just say, well, it is what it is. And this is how the world <laughs> is. Yeah. But you're making a difference, whether you know it or not, by living in your truth and by speaking your truth putting that out in the in, in the universe so people can know, yes, these things do happen. And here I am, a professional, college-educated, attractive, you know, um, person, and I'm going through these things that other groups don't necessarily mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. go through and mm -hmm. I think that is 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 just phenomenal and I wanted to share that with everyone here. Um do you have anything you want to leave people with? Ooh. Wow, you going deep on I know. <laughs> First, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. And um, I, I want to echo everything that you just said about you, just everything that we're talking about prior to, to the interview starting. Oh, you thank go, you. Go, you better do it. <laughs> um, what, what do I want to leave people with? One, I, I, like I mentioned, do what you love because you love it. Um, two, just I, I, be nice to each other. Everybody just be nice and be mm -hmm. open. Be open to receiving someone else's truth. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a cookie cutter copy of everything else. Ooh, that's not deep. what what life is. That's not what the world is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're happy doing what it is that you're doing, the way you're doing it, fine, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Don't judge someone else mm -hmm. because it's not what you would do. And be open to accepting what it is that other people do because that's what they want to do. It's not you, it's them. It's not your life. It's mm -hmm. their life. That's what you have to do. And I, I think the more people 
with the more people that realize that, the better this world is going to be a lot sooner. I can't, I can't agree more. And with that being said, I think that's that's it. I want to thank you so much for being on conversation with Tona Brown. I think that people are going to really enjoy this interview. I also want people to buy your book. Can you please tell them all the places they can go to get your book and follow you online? Absolutely. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Brendan Slocum. Not to be confused with my younger nephew, who's less attractive than I am, Brendan Slocum, <laughs> twenty-two. Uh, Brendan Slocum on IG, Brendan Slocum on Twitter and Facebook, and you can buy via and conspiracy at your local bookstores please support local bookstores absolutely. um you know in any place else that you buy books but try your local bookstore first absolutely so go look look him up you guys on ig because i know a lot of my followers are on ig please look him up please look on my facebook page i'll be sharing things on there as well so thank you very very much and like i said you're leaving us with all this wonderful positivity and that's what this world needs we need to stop judging each other we need to get out here and support each other specifically we need to support more men of color um as we know that that's not what usually happens and we see what's happening out in the streets so it's our job which is what i'm taking on myself with this show to show the proper way to do that you know, because I think mainstream has so many excuses as to why they don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're going to do in conversations with Tony Brown. We're going to show support of you men. We're going to uplift you men. We're going to show the world how to do it. And I want people to buy your book. Thank you all very much for coming on, um, for listening to us here on Conversations with Tony Brown. I'm Tony Brown. I am here with Brendan Slocum. And we were talking about his book, The Violin Conspiracy. Run out there and get that book. You all have a wonderful day. Bye. Mm -hmm.